full moon. And finally, the cicadas have stopped. I hear a lot of crickets, and no cicadas. So I came out here tonight in the middle of the beautiful Gila forest, and we are challenging ourselves to some astrophotography, some Milky Way astrophotography. And the reason why that is difficult, if you'll notice, there is a giant flashlight in the sky right now, and that is the moon. Yesterday was a full moon, so it's like 98%. So word on the street is that if you use a circular polarizer during moonlight, uh, you can potentially get Milky Way shots. So I have my, uh, this guy, my circular polarizer from Polar Pro, and well, this is just the case because it's actually over there doing a time lapse right now. But I want to see if we can cut the glare from the moonlight on the Milky Way. So the same principles apply, the same principles of physics and circular polarizers in that you don't want to shoot it too wide because then you're going to get wonky dark parts and a bendy part. And you still need to adhere to the basically 90 degree rule, which is circular polarizers work by polarizing light that is 90 degree angles to the light source. Uh, so the light source is the moon back there. And luckily for us, the Milky Way is right over there, just about 90 degrees from the moon. So it's actually should polarize it fairly well. So I've already done a couple of test shots now and here is a test shot that I did with uh, no polarization and you can just barely faintly see the Milky Way. And then here's the same shot with full polarization and you can definitely tell that it's working. So it's not going to make it look like uh, there's no moon. It's not going to completely eradicate or negate the uh, the moonlight, but it is doing enough, cutting enough of that moonlight glare to bring out the Milky Way. And then here's the edited shot. So with some photoshopping, you can definitely bring that out, and it's a huge help. And that's something that I couldn't do without the polarizer. That's just I couldn't have brought that much detail out in post. Uh, no matter what I did without that polarizer. So that's definitely a huge help, and that definitely surprised me. So I wanted to take this up one notch and test it a little bit further and see if I can get a really cool time lapse. So I stuck my 5D4 and my polarizer with my 2470 on uh, my gimbal on my Feutech AK4500, and it has time lapse mode. So I'm gonna pan from uh, left to right here, basically starting over here and then panning this way across these beautiful mountains that you can't see. And I have the polarizer engaged. So the challenge is gonna be panning is going to change the angle of the polarization and the angle of the light. But what I'm hoping is I'm kind of panning as the moon is also moving this way and the Milky Way is moving this way a little bit. So they're not moving quite together, but I'm hoping that if I pan at just the right speed and just the right time and keep the moon relatively the same angle out of shot, that the polarizer will stay engaged um, for all or most of the time lapse, at least enough to bring that Milky Way out. So that's what we're testing. I'm also still testing. I told you guys a couple of videos ago that uh, Feutech sent me that uh, that gimbal to test out, and this is one of the things that I'm most excited to test out. So um, this will be my if this works, this will be my first uh, really good astro panning time lapse with the gimbal. And I'm definitely going to do some more videos on that in the future, and I'm going to do a time-lapse tutorial with the gimbal itself once I really have it solid down and feel comfortable with I know how to do everything I want to do and teach you guys. But that'll be coming soon, so hopefully that'll work. But for right now, we have about uh, two hours left, I think. I did it about two and a half hours. So I'm going to make some tea and turn these loom cubes off so that they can have some time to rest. Although, I think they'll probably last almost that long. They did the other night. They're pretty impressive. The loom cube air is lighting me right now, and then I got a loom cube back there. Great stuff for photography. I'm gonna be doing some stuff on that, on how to light up foregrounds for astrophotography here pretty soon too. But uh, it's tea time now. If I can find my car. Oh, 
All right, man, I didn't even need my headlight. That moon is bright. Okay, I got the goods. I'm really glad Polar Pro sent me this hard case because I always put it in my back pocket and then I sit down on it on hard rocks. <laughs> I haven't broken it yet. So for this evening's tea, I think we're gonna do a nice Earl Grey. While we're letting my tea cool off, let's talk about why the heck you would want to stick a filter on at nighttime. So there's a couple of things. So if you guys have used a circular polarizer before, you know that even just a regular circular polarizer will cut the light down. It'll act a little bit like an ND. Uh, and it's usually about a stop to a stop and a half depending on the brand and the density and all that kind of stuff. But it's usually ballpark about a stop to stop and a half. And that's, that's what mine is from the Polar Pro. It's about a stop and a half. So you're gonna want to make sure you have a fast lens. I'm using a 2.8, which is not that fast, but uh, in this case, it's fast enough. So I think I've got it like ISO 3200 at 20 second. And that's, that's uh, definitely like well over, did the moon, is it? No, nope, still bright. I thought the moon went behind a cloud or something. Um, so anyways, why would you wanna do, why would you want the polarizer? Well, being able to get the Milky Way with the total landscape like lit up, that's something that uh, a loom cube can't do. You know, I, I use my loom cubes a lot for like painting and stuff, for light painting like little cacti and, and people and, and little things that are close in the foreground, but the moon, can light up this entire area. But the downside is the moon usually drowns the Milky Way out. So being able to use the polarizer, get the Milky Way and have the moon just light up this entire beautiful landscape is just fantastic. So that just that's all the image that I want right there. So just one more reiteration here because this isn't like a tutorial or anything. I have a couple of astro uh, photography basics tutorials. If you want to check that out, I have that. Uh, but Regarding the circular polarizer, uh, again, I also have uh, tutorials on what is a circular polarizer and how do you use it, uh, just in general, if you are a little unfamiliar with that, or if you wanna see how else it's used, then you can check out that video as well. But the key that I want you to, if you wanna try this with the Astro stuff, the key things you need to take away here are, you need a fast lens. Uh, I would recommend something 2.8 or faster. And like I said, you don't wanna go wide. So I could have thrown a 16 to 35 on here or my 14 or something, uh, but that's, that's uh, too wide for the polarizer to really be effective. So just keep those two things in mind. Like I said, I'm using my 2470 2.8, which I think is just for this purpose is a really great uh, focal length. It's wide enough to get a little bit of landscape and get the Milky Way to have the Milky Way take up a big chunk of the sky, but it's not too wide. So as the polarizer is just like giving me weird edges and stuff like that. So keep those things in mind. If you want to try it out, I highly recommend it because having these conditions, clear skies, Milky Way, plus the moon lighting up the landscape is just really awesome. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. I hope it helped you out a little bit, maybe uh, give you a new technique to get some better Astro stuff. If you have any questions about anything that I'm doing here tonight with uh, the settings that I went over or with the circular polarizer and what it does or anything like that, leave those in the comments below and I'll definitely answer them. Hit that like button if this video helped you out. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. I've got new videos every week. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. If I haven't burned my tongue off yet. Gotta do it. That's hot. All right. What? Yes, it is. I'm not making this stuff up. Just because you have zero sensitivity to heat. No, sip the tea. It's hot. It burned my tongue off.
I have half a tongue now. Just because you're cold all the time, she's inhuman. And see, I can't even hardly hold this because it's so hot. And she's just, you made it colder. <laughs> It's tolerable now. That's better. All right, let's go check on the time lapse. 